And we are live. Thank you for joining us. I'm Stuart from NetReady and this is MLM for CEOs, the channel that is aimed at providing key insights to business owners operating within the multi-level marketing space. In today's episode, we're going to be speaking about the golden factor in terms of your pricing and to unpack all of that information. I'm joined by a special guest. He is known and referred to as the godfather of MLM. He is also, <laughs> he's shaking his head. <laughs> he is also known as one of the authorities within the multi-level marketing space with 35 years experience. He's a great friend and mentor of mine, Mr. Richard Sletcher. How are you going, Stuart, Richard? <laughs> have you actually watched The Godfather? <laughs> Do you know what? I've been thinking about this whole Godfather uh, concept. My children all have godfathers and I absolutely love them and they're the protectors uh, of my children. Okay. So let's look at it from that aspect. Okay. That so I, not the movie Godfather. Not the, not the uh, movie. Okay. The protector of this industry. Okay. The authority within this industry. Uh, okay. I spun that quickly, didn't I? You did. Uh, <laughs> so I tell you what, you're an expert. <laughs> How's it going? You yeah, well? it's going well. Yeah, no problems. It's, it's good to be back. I got you out of bed early, 11 o'clock on a Thursday. I know. What the hell? Sheesh. At my age, that's like 2 o'clock in the morning for most people. <laughs> <laughs> um, Richard, so what we want to discuss in today's episode, let's get straight in, uh, is is this pricing factor. Yeah. Now, um, in t typically, we want to pay out this network of marketers enough uh, money in order for them to stay interested in the business to generate an income for themselves but there has to be enough let's call it fat within the retail price so we look at what's and I've and I've done a lot of research we've spoken a lot about this that we we typically look between a five and seven golden factor so let's call it six the the golden factor is six now what is this golden factor do you want to unpack that a little bit more yeah, look, I think let's, before we actually go down that road, okay. let's talk about traditional retail. Okay, let's do it. Okay, and I've been involved for a number of years in bringing in various different products and selling them through the retail space. Mm -hmm. um, not myself personally, but on behalf of clients of our ad agency mm. that we, we were involved with. And what I discovered is it depends on the product, but on average, if you take the manufactured cost, the landed cost of the product, and what it sells for, on average, through traditional retail, you got a five to six markup. Okay. And and there's a reason for that. Number one, if you take it from the manufacturer's point of view, they've got to bring the product in, they've got to warehouse the product, they've got to fun, fund, finance that product on the floor. Mm. They've got to advertise that product because the retail stores insist on them doing their own advertising and marketing. Then they've got the logistics companies, the distribution companies that will take the product and get them listed within the retail stores. Then they've got the companies that will pick the product up and deliver it to the retail stores around the country, and there's a logistics cost involved there. Sure. Then they, the manufacturer has to pay for shelf space. If it's eye level, it's more expensive than it's at the ground. If it's a gondola end, it's more expensive. They've got to pay to have that product packed on the, on the shelves. Mm. They've got to pay for the advertising and marketing because they do a contribution to the retailer's advertising and marketing. If there's any product that needs to be returned, the, the retailers have a don't care policy. If you don't want the product for whatever reason, you bring it back to the retailer, the retailer sends it back to you. Sure. End of story. There's no discussion about it. The product gets returned to you, it's in their contract. You have to uplift that product. You have to pay for that product to be collected or destroyed. So that's a cost. And then if they pay you on time, there's another percentage you have to pay. <laughs> and then, yeah, it's crazy. That's crazy. And then they'll pay you on 30, 60, 90, 120 days after invoice. So you have to fund that money all the way along the line. In order to make this work, you have to have margin. And so on average, the manufacturer is making a five to six times markup between the manufactured cost and what it sells for on the shelf to cover all of those costs. So people put this halo above the retailers. Oh, they're fighting for the little man. Mm. I promise you, the only mm. person the big retailer cares about is the shareholder. Yeah. Okay? And go and have a look at all the big retailers worldwide. Go and look at their, their market cap and their share value mm -hmm. mm. and see what they're doing. These guys are not hurting. Sure. Okay? So they are making money, and they will screw every supplier to the wall if they can. Yeah. To maximize their profits, 
to ensure that their cash flow is good, to ensure their business is working well. But not only that, I mean, you, there's serious competition within that store. So I can have the same product and left and right of my product is, is that same product. And, yes. we are, and we are our, cons, our consumers, just by nature, they choose the product on price. It's the, it's the emotional decision. That's not even a, a logical decision. I'm buying on price. And if I see a price on left or right of me is lower, you know, I've, I've worked so hard to drive people to that store in terms of doing all the above and below the line marketing, but they're still going to choose on price. So what it becomes is this margin race to, race the, bottom. to the bottom. Exactly. And where the, so now where the scary part of this comes in, it's okay. So the price gets squeezed at the top end. The retailers say, hey, Product A is selling for this price and you're selling for that price. If you want to compete, you have to drop your price. Now the guy, the only place he's got to make margin, the only place is in the manufacturing process. So how does he make his margin? He makes it by cutting the quality of the product. Mm, that's he horrible. removes expensive ingredients out of the products to bring the cost of the product down so you can retain margin. So as the margin gets squeezed from the top by the retailers and by competition, the it's the consumer that pays because what happens is the quality gets reduced. So they squeeze on the top here. Now, if you're a massive corporation with deep pockets mm. and long arms and you're mm. manufacturing products and you've got the advertising budget and all of that side of things, then you can compete in that space because you can retain your margins because you're building value through the advertising. Sure. But if you're a small mm. operator, you can't compete. And what happens is these small operators, they go in, they get churned up and spat out, and I've seen it, they are shipwrecks afterwards. Companies who go into the retail space absolutely get decimated. Mm -hmm. um, they lose, I mean, one of our clients lost sure. his house, his family, everything yeah. because of this exact squeeze. Yeah. And eventually the retailer said to him, listen, take your products out. You need to uplift it at your cost. Mm -hmm. If you don't, we'll destroy it at your cost yeah and he ended up losing everything through this so the retailers are not all that and they are still making that margin so what happens within the mlm space we're saying okay let's just cut all of that out the big benefit of multi-level marketing is you train somebody to sit with a customer and explain the product in detail mm. tell them what's in it how it works what the price is build value now you can make the product extremely high quality because you don't have this price squeeze on you all the time because mm. you're telling the person why this is worth the money you're asking for it. Sure. And so that six factor is still in play, but now where's that money going? Mm -hmm. That money is getting paid to an army of marketers who are out there one-on-one, -on -one, in person, evangelizing your product. Mm. And that's where the money goes. So it's not going to the fat cats. It's not going to the shareholders to pick and pay. It's going to individuals, humans who are out there marketing your product. And, and further to that, you're controlling the whole value chain. So from, from manufacturing, you know, you could get your manufacturer who creates that product for you, who puts it on the shelf, and then your people, your network goes out and sells it. And they can sell it with confidence because they know that the squeeze is not there to try and squeeze every ounce of juice out of this lemon. Mm that the companies, and if you have a look at the MLM companies predominantly, and there's exceptions to the rule, but all of the main MLM companies are focused on quality. Mm -hmm. They're not focused on price mm. because we're not in the retail space. So we can make the ultimate quality product and justify the price with what we've done. I, I'd like to just, one of the stories that I love is, is the Amway mm. um, vitamins. Yes. So their story is incredible. Now, Amway vitamins are more expensive than any other vitamin on the planet. They, or maybe not on the planet, let's not use hyperbole <laughs> there, but they're expensive. Yes. And, but when somebody comes and sits down and talks to you about the Amway products, the story is unbelievably powerful because they've bought the farms where the, the raws are grown. Okay? They don't use any herbicides, any pesticides. To deal with aphids, they release lady be, ladybugs. What are they yes. called? Uh, they're the spiders. No, no, ladybugs. Oh, okay. Ladybirds. Yeah. You know these little yes, bugs? Yes, yes, They oh, eat the aphids. aphids. Yes. And then to control the bigger insects, they yes. release spiders. And yes, they this, release yes. the spiders by the billions into the fields. Wow. And the spiders control the insects without damaging the fruit. 
Huh. Then they buy all of the farms around their farm to ensure that they don't have any leaching from, from farms outside of their area. So they own the farms around their farm so there's no leaching into their into their waters, the into pesticides their pesticides, and the herbicides, the herbicides, etc. Yes. Then from the moment that that product is ready for picking to the time when it's in their, their vitamin bottles, they've got their bottling plants and, their, and their, their processing plants on the farms, 24 hours and that product's ready to go. And then when wow. you have a look at the efficacy mm. of those products, the quality is just in a different league. Mm. Now you pay a premium for that. Sure. You could never sell this product through a pick and pay or a retail store because there's nobody there to justify why you're paying that price. And right. people will go down, they'll see this is twice the price of anything else. I'm not buying it, I'm buying that one. Mm. And they would take that one off the shelf, not realizing that they're getting a quarter of the product for half the price. For double the price, they can get four times the product. Mm. You with me? Yeah. So, so the issue is that because you're not on the race to the bottom, because you can justify your price, because you are not needing to cut your efficacy of your product to try and reach some mythical price limit, you can actually sell an extremely high product, high quality product, and still retain your margins. You control that entire value chain. Okay. And so let's bring it back to now this golden factor. So what, what is this number? Uh, we're looking at, at six. Yeah, that's the golden number. Okay. If you can hit a six, the minimum is five. Okay. So if you manufacture for $1, yes. we're talking about it's on your shelf in your warehouse for $1, mm -hmm. then you should sell it for a minimum of $5. Okay. All right. Okay. And then obviously pay your commissions out of that and have a profit for the company. Okay. So you, you mentioned commissions. In terms of commissions, how much is a company as a company am I paying out out of that that five or the six dollars? Well, generally you're promising uh, um, sixty percent of that. Okay, all right. And what do you are you realistically paying that? Is that the amount that you would pay? Well, there's there's um, there's breakage. Okay. So on average, you would target forty percent. Yes. But some people would earn sixty percent. Some people would only earn twenty percent. And on average, you'd be paying out around forty percent. Okay. But then you've got incentives and recognition that need to come into play. So that would be added on top of that. Mm -hmm. So generally, if you come away with a 50% all-in cost, marketing cost, that's probably where you need to be. The other side of it is that you are going to, that will be used to run the company um, and, and obviously create your profit. I mean, if you look at it, 50% of the business, you're giving away a lot of your business, but they are your full marketing force. You don't have to spend on TV ads for 30 seconds for millions of dollars. You don't have to spend on radio. You don't have to spend on Facebook marketing. These are your primary marketers. Yes. And you have to pay them enough for them to remain interested in the business. Yeah, well, if they're not making money, they leave. Of course. <laughs> That's just, I mean, it's a simple process. I mean, let's not get confused about it. Sure. People, if you want somebody to sit down with somebody, spend their time, evangelizing your product, you have to pay them. Wow. You don't get that for nothing. Sure. What if I can't achieve a six factor on my products? What if it's something that I can only do a, a three or, a, or even a two? Okay, so th the first of all, if you've only got a, a, a small margin that to play with, mm. there's two things you've either got to have. Either you need to have a high volume annuity type product. Okay. An example would be telephony or insurance or something like that. Yeah. So it's high volume and there's a recurring, the, the person pays every month. Sure. So telephony is a prime example. Let's, let's say you're saying selling voice over IP. Even if you're only making a 10% margin there, you've only got 10% to give away. Because it's on every single call, every single minute that goes out, it becomes a viable um, mm -hmm. proposition. And the way that you work that, you've only got 10%, let's say, the, the call costs $1, you can actually give 10 cents out in commission. That's mm. all you've got, that's yes. your margin. Yep. Then what you do is you make the product 10% commissionable. In other words, you say, we're gonna pay out our commission based on 10% of the value of the sale. Okay. And so that's a standard process within our industry. So you're still paying out 60%, you're still promising 60%, but you're promising that 60% 
on just the 10% profit that you've got in the pot. Uh -huh. Obviously, you can't pay it on the full dollar right, you because you're paying bankrupt. out 60 cents. You're only making 10 cents. That's mm. a recipe for disaster, mm. obviously. <laughs> so you make the product 10% commissionable. And it's high volume. And so a network market is excited because he signs a customer up. He knows that customer is going to be on that platform for the next 10, 20, 30 years. And he's going to continue earning commissions and so he can sign up a hundred a thousand two thousand ten thousand customers and generate himself a real or herself a really nice income mm. on the other side of the spectrum you need a high if you've got low volumes you need a high value item mm, okay so if you're selling lear jets right for 40 <laughs> million dollars a pop yes then a 10 percent commission is meaningful That's great yeah okay so and and so if you have a look at places like real estate, um, there's big real estate um, mm. plays in yes. the multi-level marketing space, mm -hmm. where you've got a high value item but a small profit margin percentage wise, that also works because there's enough money in the pot to keep people interested. Okay. Where you have a problem is if you're selling something like a, a lotion, a potion, creams, um, that kind of stuff, and you don't have any margin there. Mm -hmm. That's just a disaster because nobody makes any money. When nobody's making money, you can forget about them them actually buying the product. So the first thing you need to do is say, okay, this is my product. This is what it cost me times six. Cost me one dollar. Realistically, mm. can I justify a six dollar price? Sure. Will the market buy it? Will yeah. my customers still be interested at that at that yeah. price? The worst case scenario, $5. Can I sell it for $5? Yes. Now, if you sit there and say, look, I can't sell this thing for $5. It's actually not worth $5. Then this is not the space for you to play in. Mm. If you can justify that $5 price for whatever reason, then you've got a business. Now, understand, if you go retail, you've still got to justify that $5 selling price because mm. that's what it's going to be. And so if you can't justify it in our space, you can't justify it in that space, you don't have a business. Certainly. You know, and there's some products that they're low volume, they don't have margin, you know, nobody's making money. Bread being a prime example. Right. Nobody's yeah. making money yeah, on bread. There's a two, maybe three factor on bread. Not if, if you're lucky. Yeah. You know, maybe there's a two factor. Cost them one rand to manufacture, they sell it for two rand. Mm. And Nikes, I wish they did sell it for two rand, but That'd you know what I mean? Nice. There's no margins. Everybody's working on the bread line, so to say. <laughs> <laughs> like how you threw that in. And and for a big retailer, they're not making money out of bread. Sure. But if they don't have bread on their shelves, nobody comes to them. Yeah, that's all so about there's, traffic. So there's lost leaders there, you know, and if that's the space you're in, then the retail is the way to go. Yeah. But if you're in a traditional product and you've got the margin, then... If you're a massive operator, retail is still the way to go. Mm -hmm. But if you're a small player, then the MLM space gives you a lever to pull that makes you competitive with the biggest companies in the world. Yeah. And you can really scale your business to any size through the network. I would like us to do an episode on what makes a successful MLM business. Having this factor, having a big network, because the, those are the two primary drivers of it. And I know we've addressed the, the, the similar concepts in our Ignition Plus video, but if you can have those two elements nailed down, the golden factor of six, as well as a big network to tap into that become the marketers and advocates for your products. And a desirable product. Well, it has to be <clears throat> desirable, of course. I mean, why the would The more you? desirable your product is, the easier it is for your business to run. Mm. You know, if you've got a product that people think, wow, I'd be an idiot not to buy it. Right. That's that's where you've you've made the the sort of Yeah. The nexus of everything comes together there. Love Great it. product with margin yes. and a big network, you're away. Okay, so we don't have to do this episode now. We're done. <laughs> Sorted. <laughs> Richard, thank you so much for your time. Let's come to the end of the episode. Just just to recap, in terms of creating this or finding your six X golden factor your manufacturing, your bottling, your labeling of that final product sitting on the shelf ready to sell is $1. You would then mark it up times six and you'd sell it to the end user, the end customer for $6. Yes. Yeah. So that's that's how you, very plain and simple. Yes. If you can achieve that, brilliant. You've got enough fat in order to pay out the commissions to the network, run a sustainable, successful business. So there we go. Excellent. Light bulb moment. 
Ding. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for your time. No problem. Okay. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's a pleasure having you here. Please uh, follow us on all of our social platforms. You'll see them in the body of the text below. Um, did you want to cough? I did. I'm holding it. <laughs> Go. Subscribe to our channel, please, uh, and hit the bell for notifications. Each time we upload new content, you're going to get that notification. Watch it. There's insightful, key information here that's going to help your business get off the ground and gain the momentum it needs to become successful. Thank you so much for your time. Enjoy the rest of the week. Cheers.